On this episode, we head to the mountains and hit the snow with the new 2020 Range Rover Evoque. It's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2020 Range Rover Evoque. It is a small crossover that, by my estimation, shouldn't even exist. When I was a little kid, my grandfather owned a Land Rover Series 2A. It was, in fact, his daily driver. To me, the Series 2A was a Land Rover. What we're looking at here certainly isn't anything like the Series 2A. The Evoque is modern and more fashion forward than anything else. It's loaded with tech, digital screens, and I'm sure my grandfather wouldn't even know what to do with any of it. But here we are, so let's take a look. The 2020 Evoque is on a new chassis, and they've made it a little bit bigger in the process. It's also undergone a major technology overhaul, both in terms of usability as well as engine options. This one is actually a mild hybrid. It's a 48 volt system that basically is just enough to give you a punch from the get-go and to improve economy slightly. Uh, they do have a plug-in electric over in Europe, but here in the US, we get only two models, the mild hybrid, which we have here, and then a straight two liter turbo version as well. So is this thing any good in its second generation iteration? Let's find out. The model we're testing today is the top of the line R-Dynamic HSE P300. This trim starts at $55,800. Ours has several options, including upgraded seats, panoramic sunroof, 21 inch wheels, surround view camera system, and a lot more for a total price of $67,190 US dollars, including destination. Under the hood is a two liter turbo four cylinder engine. It's hooked up to a mild hybrid system consisting of a starter generator connected to an underfloor battery. This system is designed to provide a performance boost in around town driving. Total output, 296 horses. Power is pushed through a standard nine speed automatic transmission to a GKN all wheel drive system. This features a central drive shaft disconnect to help with economy when cruising at highway speeds. EPA rates this hybrid at 21 miles to the gallon city and 26 on the highway. The new chassis provides a little extra space in the back with 22 cubic feet behind the second row. Not exactly flat. Fold the seats down for 50.5 cubic feet of total capacity. Got a 12 volt socket on the side and under the floor, a spare. While I definitely give them props for an airy design, because this actually does feel very nice and open, uh, the sunroof is only like an inch from my head. I don't like being that close to the glass personally. Uh, I do get, however, three stage heating and I also get a five volt USB as well as a 12 volt power socket. So I got lots of features back here. The seats are comfortable. It's just that headroom issue. Also getting in, this is really low. Um, so what you're doing is you're really paying a penalty for this kind of cool sleek design back here uh, with low headroom and honestly, not a lot of legroom either. Neat feature on the side here, there's actually a notification system to tell me if somebody's coming when I'm opening my door so I don't open it and uh, get hit by a car. One of the key design elements held over from the previous model is this tiny back window. And yeah, it's just as hard as ever to see out of. Thank goodness it has a surround view camera system, right? Let's take a look at that. Up front is a modern and stylish cabin, lush with updated technology and creature comforts. The interior on this is really quite lovely, and you would kind of expect that at over $67,000, because this is the high-end version. I like that next to the transmission selector, uh, you don't have any piano black down here, because uh, that would scratch. It just happens, you, you, there's a lot of activity around the shifter, so that's really nice that they, they've moved it into areas where you're not actually going to be touching it. We get this leather wrapped steering wheel with paddle shifters and all sorts of controls on it. Now these controls don't make a lot of sense when you first look at them, but after you drive the vehicle for a little bit, you can figure them out pretty quickly. 
The traditional gauge cluster has been replaced with a now standard 12.3 inch display. This gives you complete control over all safety settings. It can also be customized to highlight your favorite bits of info, including maps or gauges. I do like that they use more of a traditional PRND on the gear shift down here. Uh, I can slot it over for sport and manual override. Um, instead of the dial, the dial is okay, but I kind of prefer this. One of the highlights of this new Evoque is the updated InControl Touch Pro Duo infotainment system. It looks cool with a ton of features, but it's not quite perfected. Everything just seems to take an extra beat, and that's frustrating. I click seats, three, two, there I get seats. Everything just isn't instantaneous. It just takes a small beat longer. And I think it's probably worse in the vehicle program settings. Here I click over and three, two, there, three, two, there, three, two, there. I will say that the layout is actually pretty smart. Down here we uh, can easily switch between climate, seats, come on, catch up. While up here, I can still switch between other things. I can look at my navigation media and phone. I can also pull up cameras. Uh, and I can actually switch between so many different camera views, which is a real Land Rover kind of trademark, you know, because you use these cameras while off-roading to check clearances as well as uh, wheel position. So that's pretty cool. I can also go into a full 360 mode. Uh, I can look just ahead. And that this is a really cool setup. It shows me my wheel position wheel angle as well as front and the side view cameras so I can really see what rocks are coming up and what what issues I'm going to be facing. It also maps the terrain to the underside of the car helping you to understand just a little bit better what's going on under the vehicle. This is of course loaded with the latest safety gear. We have blind spot monitoring, collision mitigation, we have lane detection. Um, what else? We have a heads up display. It has backup camera plus a trick rear view display hidden in the reverse mirror. But even with all this tech, it still doesn't support rear auto braking, which is a missed opportunity. There are some bugs. Uh, my wheels aren't spinning like that. At least I hope they're not. Let's use the voice command to see if we can get to the nearest Starbucks. Find the nearest Starbucks. Sorry, I missed that. Please say a command. Navigate to the nearest Starbucks. There is more than one Starbucks available. Oh. Choose a line number. Okay. So Starbucks, 120th Avenue, Nebraska, 12221. Nebraska. Kirkland. Northeast. It thought Northeast was Nebraska. <laughs> Destination. How very European of it, right? <laughs> what, they don't have northeast roads in Europe? Huh. Okay, so the functionality is here. There's just little quirks which are annoying, like calling northeast roads Nebraska. Is it going to do that on every single road? That's insane that they didn't catch that. That's actually kind of hilarious and also kind of sad. The new system does support over-the-air updates, so hopefully these issues can be corrected in the future. Moving on to the actual different drive modes that we do have here, uh, there's dynamic, which is for swervy roads, eco, which will retard the throttle and keep it at the lowest revs possible. Uh, we also have a comfort program, which smooths out the adaptive suspension. It also has grass, gravel, snow program, which is one we'll be using later. That's for slippery conditions. It'll retard the throttle, have a low uh, traction launch, and basically do everything we can from slipping off the road. Uh, next is a mud ruts program. And then we also have a sand program. Sand program usually reduces the amount of traction control uh, to the least amount possible to keep wheel spin and momentum going forward. It'll also usually shift as much power to the back as possible. So once I click off-road down here, then I can see all sorts of cool information, such as my wheel and power distribution. Uh, I can see slope, uh, compass, 
all sorts of really cool stuff that is very Land Rovery. Uh, and I think that's honestly why a lot of people buy these types of vehicles is more tools gives you more capability off road. It, it just, just does. If you can see better, if you can track better, if you can manage what you have better, you will do better, which means you can get through more things. Let's head up to the mountains and on the way we will test out some of these safety features uh, as well as see just how comfortable it is to ride. Let's start with some launch tests just to see what we can expect from the traction system. First, with the drive mode set to comfort, traction on, and transmission and sport. Very controlled with little to no slip. Next, dynamic with traction on and transmission in sport. A little more aggressive, but still very little slip. Now, sand with traction on and sport transmission. Finally, sand with traction off. As we can see, once the turbo kicks in, the Evoque isn't afraid of a little wheel spin. Around town, the Evoque is quite comfortable. The optional adaptive suspension does a good job of soaking up road irregularities when in comfort mode, while also giving a proper firmer feel when in dynamic mode. The dampers do adjust every 100 milliseconds based on sensor inputs, and they do a great job. Like many other modern cars, the Evoque vectors torque using a braking system. That means it'll apply a little brake to the inside wheel to assist with corner rotation. This helps to reduce oversteer and gives the Evoque a confident feel even in the corners. Unfortunately, starting from a stop doesn't feel quite as confident. The Evoque is prone to significant lag from pedal down to actually moving forward. This creates an unsettling lurch that becomes even more pronounced the more aggressively you drive. Now, if you do pretend like you're driving Miss Daisy, it almost feels fine. But that's not how I drive. And that's not how a lot of people drive. If I'm on a hill and I want to go, I want that to happen when I hit the gas. Since we measure from pedal down, let's see what this does to affect the zero to 60 run. Three, two, one. Oh, let's put it in sport. Uh, we'll change the vehicle mode to dynamic. Okay, let's do three, two, one, and go. Oh, that's really slow to start. 28, 35, 42, 50, and 60. So the performance of this car isn't really that electrifying in spite of the fact that it does have a mild hybrid assist. Car and Driver, which does measure from an adjusted rollout speed, rates the Evoque P300 at 6.6 .6 seconds in the 0 to 60. Our measurement of approximately 8 seconds is due in part to excessive delay off the line, since we measure from pedal down. Most cars that's low off the line at least get great gas mileage. Uh, you're still not going to get great MPGs. You're looking at 26 miles to the gallon on the highway and 21 in the city. On the freeway, it's very comfortable. I have pretty good visibility out of the front, although this A-pillar is actually quite large and does obscure a lot of that view, but you're not usually looking out the corner, so I guess that's not that big of a problem. There is a lot of stuff on this vehicle, everything from blind spot warning uh, to the heads-up display. It also has collision mitigation. It also has adaptive cruise control. Now, that adaptive cruise control isn't as advanced as some others. Uh, this one, it does do lane detection, but it doesn't do lane tracing. So if you rely on it, you are going to bump between the lines. That is, when it even sees a line, it doesn't always. And as we're heading into the mountains here, I am seeing snow. It'll be interesting to see if our uh, rock trail is um, this time a snow trail, because <laughs> we just had a whole bunch of snow last night. Um, I'm here at about 1,500 feet, and I'm already seeing snow on the side of the road, and we need to go up at least another 500 feet uh, to get to our little off-road course. Well, this is a winter wonderland. Let's go ahead and switch it down into off-road mode, uh, or snow mode actually, which will minimize the amount of slip that we're getting. Uh, go into program, go to grass, gravel, snow, and we'll see if that improves handling. Oh yeah, I can feel that, that the traction control system is definitely being more aggressive in keeping the vehicle going straight. That's nice. Ha. 
New on the 2020 Evoke is a water weighting feature. This measures the outside water levels and warns if it's too close to the maximum 23.6 inch depth. Let's see what this does. Bring it up on the main screen here. It shows that it's gonna, indicates that it's gonna show how high the water is. Let's see. Um, it's not actually sensing anything. It's just, oh, it will only trigger at half a foot and we must not quite be at half a foot here. Okay, that's fine. Oh man, this is lovely. First, first snow of the year. It's great. Perfect vehicle for it. As the snow comes in through the season, this will accumulate to several feet, at which point they'll shut this down and you won't be able to get through unless you have uh, proper snow tires. I've tried, trust me, even in a lifted forerunner, it can be problematic if you don't have the proper shreds. But right now, a few inches, oh man, this is great. Snow mode isn't just more aggressive in the traction control, it also dulls the throttle slightly so I don't get all that lurchy wheel spin from the get-go. Oh, we already got a branch down here. Let's climb over that. Boom. So far, it's doing great. And this amount of snow is probably the most that somebody would really want to tackle. You know, somebody who's buying the fashionable Evoke. Uh, this is probably the most you would do. And it is doing just a fine job. You know, this hill is a great opportunity to try hill descent control. So let's go ahead and trigger that. And I can use ATPC, use set to, oh, that's cool. I can increase and decrease my hill descent control just by using the cruise control. And there's a cool little gauge down there. That's neat. So I can set it to go at six miles per hour, or let's do four, maybe a little bit faster. We're just easily, controllably driving down the snow. And this is a pretty steep little hill too. This isn't this isn't minor. Let's go ahead and see if we can see what our angle is here. What other uh, angles? Currently at 11%. That's not too bad. As you can see, our rock trail is completely covered in fresh snow. This will be an interesting challenge. I don't know if I can get up this. Uh, the biggest issue is, of course, the tires. These are just Scorpions, which are okay. Uh, they're all season radials, definitely not snow tires. And almost on cue, a local passes in a previous generation Toyota RAV4 to show us how the hill climb is done when equipped with snow tires. He's got momentum. He's doing good. He's doing good. He's gunning it. He's working it. The way we're going to attack this is we're going to keep momentum. Now in the past, yes, I have stopped on this climb multiple times. Um, however, here, I know we're not going to make it if we come to a complete stop. I'm going to have to basically maintain an easy, mellow throttle through the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in snow program because that'll retard the throttle a little bit. To, help me ease in power a little bit better. And uh, then I'm also, yeah, let's do that front view camera. There we go. Okay, let's do it. Crawling along at five miles per hour. Now clearance shouldn't be an issue. This thing has 8.3 inches of ground clearance. And as we've seen in the past, anything over eight inches is no problem at all with this one. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that, that is so cool. It's showing the underbody of the course as I'm driving over it. That is awesome. That is such a Land Rover thing to do. 
So I'm maintaining momentum. I'm about three miles per hour, two miles per hour now. It's slipping, that power is getting shifted around. Come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it. <laughs> so far, the Evoke is managing front and back power, making this hill climb look super easy, even with all season radials. And I spoke too soon. I'm now sliding off the side. Oh, come on. Ah. Okay, well, we're gonna use gravity to try to rescue us here. Gravity's not a friend. Okay, let's try that again. So for those of you wondering, yes, I did bring a toe strap and a shovel. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm full throttle. Just gonna try to get this through. Come on. Can this free itself? No. Okay, let's back up a little bit, see if we can get some momentum on some fresh snow and try not to slide all the way back into a tree. Okay. Are you kidding me? Come on. We were almost there. I needed more momentum. Should have had more momentum. Okay, so we're gonna try to move back a little bit and try to do this again into the hole but I'm gonna maintain full throttle through the hole. Come on, you got this, you got this, you got this. Come on, oh, it's so close. Oh, 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 come on. Straight, straight. Ugh. Okay, let's back up just a little bit and try again. Oh, and now I'm getting into a bad position. Ah, come on. Can I can I go up onto this rock a little bit without damaging? Oh, that's not good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh boy, I think we got a problem. Let's inspect. <sighs> Well, super slippery, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, not, not looking great. So what I need to do is get back over there because I think that will give me a little bit more uh, capability, but I'm gonna have to back down slowly, but I don't have a lot of ground clearance in the back. So I'm definitely gonna use those approach angles, uh, well, the departure angle as an approach angle. Let's try to back out without hitting that big rock. There is a big rock right there. Slow, 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 slow. Well, the good news is I'm back in the middle of the road. That was not, that was not good. <laughs> Let's go left. Let's even get some momentum. Oh, man. Just can't get momentum here. Ah. Let's get those wheels straightened. I don't want to have to drive down this backwards. And I should have kept more momentum. Okay, let's do this. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Come on, give me momentum. Okay, let's turn off. Let's just turn off traction control. Let's see if this is any better. Whoa, definitely wants to spin, that's for sure. Try to get launched off a rock. As we can see, the Evoke has no problem sending lots of power to all four wheels. It's really impressive to see this level of performance in a small luxury crossover. Huh, 
That didn't work. Then we can back down, do that again. Turn traction control back on. Don't want to slide sideways into anything. That's always a bad call. Don't want to move too fast. The left definitely seems to be better. Okay, let's do this. Traction control is on again. And I'm gonna cut way left this time. Yes! Made it! <laughs> oh geez. That that was close. That was real close. So we went up, all we need to do is go down. Now this is where momentum's a big potential big problem. So I'm going to do hill descent control. I'm going to put it to the minimum, which is like one mile per hour. Now the nice thing about hill descent control is it doesn't just use, hello? I guess sometimes it just stops for no reason. Okay, the nice thing about hill descent control is that it doesn't just use one wheel for braking, it individually brakes all four wheels. Oops, gotta watch that clearance. I have 8.3 inches, not unlimited. Okay, let's go back to, you know what? I, this is not the right hill for hill descent control. This is not the right hill for it. <laughs> okay, keep my foot on that brake. Okay, we made it. To sum up my feelings about the 2020 Evoque, I have to say I'm torn. While I do love its abilities in challenging driving conditions, and it does look cool as hell, the undercooked tech and the frustrating off-the-line performance will keep me from recommending it to even part-time adventure seekers. Hopefully, an over-the-air update can clean up some of the more egregious quirks sooner than later. Until then, I'm going to have to recommend buyers give this one a pass. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Please take this moment to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, like and share our video. It's viewers like you that make this show possible. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again right here next week.